Well, good morning, everyone. For those who are in our foyer, I would encourage you to come inside. For those who are able, please stand as we sing our first song. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come, we are gathered together to lift up your name, to call on our Savior, to fall on your grace. Hear the joyful sound of our offering as your saints bow down, as your people sing. We will rise with you, lifted on your wings, and the world will see. Be seated. There is an old traditional greeting that is used on Easter Sundays. It goes like this, and you guys probably already know it. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Why don't you turn to your neighbor, wish him a happy Easter, and say, He is risen. He is risen indeed.
Well, fantastic. So good to have everybody here with us today. You glad to be in the house of the Lord? Yeah. Awesome. Amen. Want to welcome those also who are joining us online as well. So if you want to give them a wave, feel free. Just wave to the camera. There you go. Happy Easter. <laughs> I love the excitement in the air today. That's awesome. Well, guys, uh, just a couple of announcements before we uh, move on. We got a, uh, our kids corner today. It's going to be pretty exciting. Our, our kids are going to actually be teaching instead of me for Kids Corner. They've got a presentation, and uh, we're looking forward to that. Uh, uh, Monday's, uh, e Monday evening's Bible study is not happening this week. Trust me, I'm taking a break. <laughs> it's been a busy time, so uh, the office is also closed tomorrow. I'm taking a day off tomorrow. So just, uh, I know, <laughs> it's crazy, but that's what we're doing. Um, Everything else seems to still be going on. We've got our Tuesday uh, women's group meeting at uh, the church for the Bible study at 10 a.m. And uh, we also have our uh, men's study that happens Sundays at the, in the church's, uh, in the pastor's study. And that's happening. Craig was here gun ho so in the, today, but uh, oh well, he got to chat with some people and all that. But there, that shows you the enthusiasm. He was gun ho for it. So there you go. Other than that, there's not much else to share for announcements. I'm sure there's going to be some other stuff. Uh, there are things in the works. We had our nominating committee meeting there this past week. Might be wondering, what is that all about? Well, with our church, uh, our fiscal year ends at the end of April. We'll have our annual meeting in May. And in that meeting, our annual meeting that we have in May, in that meeting, we uh, elect people for various positions and and uh, in within the church. And so you may get a call from one of our nominating committee members as we uh, prayerfully and considered uh, uh, people for different positions. And so don't be surprised if you get a call from somebody uh, just to talk to you. And if you don't get a call, that doesn't mean we don't love you. And it doesn't mean we don't appreciate you. And it doesn't mean that we don't think you're important. It doesn't mean we don't want you to do stuff in the church. It's just that we have various committees that uh, are the leading, uh, that lead these uh, different initiatives. So there you go. Wow, it is just fantastic to be here today. I'm excited. I hope you are too. Our call to worship today is Isaiah 25, verse 6 to 9. On this mountain, the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best meats and the finest wines on this mountain. He will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove his people's disgrace from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day, they will say, surely this is our God. We trusted in him and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. Let us pray. Almighty God, on this joyful day, we gather to celebrate the resurrection of your son, Jesus who is the Christ. We come before you with hearts full of praise for the gift of salvation that you have given us through your son who conquered death and ushered in a new life for all who believe in him. As we begin our worship service today, we ask that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit. Bless us with an awareness of your presence as you move amongst us. Encourage us in our faith as we draw near to you sincerely and with reverence, celebrating your goodness and your grace. We give you all the praise and worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now in the time in our service is our offering. If our ushers, our young ushers could come forward and give us a hand. There we go. All right. Can I have your help with over that one? Maybe you two can help uh, together with this one. And, and I'm going to get you. Can I get you to help? Can you do that side? Awesome.
Thank you. Can I have the congregation please rise? Our Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for all that you do for us. Thank you for your son and for the grace you pour into our lives. Lord, these are our tithes and our offerings. Just a small portion of what you've given us, we return to you as a form of worship, an act of trust. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please stay standing as we continue to sing worship songs to God.
Wonderful. You may be seated. That was wonderful. You guys sounded so beautiful there as you sang. Awesome. Well, friends, we take time. We try to take time every other week to uh, share some praises and praise notes. And so today, I'd like to invite you to have that opportunity. Um, I'm just going to remind everyone, as I do each time we do this, is that uh, if you'd like to be praying for someone, you want to share something like that, you got to make sure that you have their permission to share share their prayer needs. Uh, but is there anyone who'd like to to give a praise note or ask for a prayer? At uh, we can do that as a church. Yes, Tammy. There you go. Wonderful, Tammy. Yes, if you weren't sure, Tammy had had a flood in her basement. And uh, there you go. But it's wonderful that we can have help from those who who, uh, care and love for us. Yes. Wonderful. Awesome for the new adventures. Yes. Yes. Mm. Awesome. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Praise God. Praise God. Awesome. Yes. Yep. Yes. Anyone else on a praise note or a prayer? Yes. Amen. Yeah. Yes. Dennis, you look like you want to say something. <laughs> he's got a knee issue, so it takes him a little while of rocking before. I think he's doing some head banging there to some music. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Okay. There you go. And that's, and that's Marion, Mary, Marie. Yeah, definitely. Anyone else want to share something, a praise or a prayer? Yes, Pat.
Amen. Yeah. We love you, Pat. We love you. We love you too, Paul. So, is there any other prayer requests or praise notes that we want to share? Yes. Oh. Oh, Deb, I'm sorry. Yeah. That's a, Deb has had a lot, such a long journey of battling cancer and has had seven operations. Is it seven? Yeah, radiation. It's just been one thing after another. You are in our prayers. We'll lift you up. Anyone else have a prayer request or a prayer? Oh, there you go. Yes. Thank you for grandma being here. Awesome. <laughs> I almost wrote that. <laughs> you know, when someone's talking, you start writing. I was like, grandma is the bet. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Anyone else? Yes? And we are praying for him and for you as well. Let's bring these to the Lord. Our Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you that we can come to you at any time in prayer. That, that you invite us to share with you those things that are on our hearts, that are weighing us down. Oh Lord, today, there is just a resounding sense of faith and just gratitude for what you're doing in our lives. Lord, we've heard a few wonderful answers to prayers of healings and, and good news from surgeries and things like that. We give you thanks for that. And we recognize that there are others in our church family who are crying out to you in their need. Thank you that you have promised never to leave them nor forsake them. Thank you that when we are weak and broken you give us the strength to carry on. We continue to lift up those who are struggling with health, who are struggling maybe emotionally. And we recognize, Lord, it's not just those of us who are here today, but there are those in our lives, family members that we care about, friends that we love, that are going through their struggles. And at this time, we lift them up in a moment of just silent a prayer. Be with them. We ask for healing. More, more importantly, Lord, we ask that you draw them close to you and that they feel your presence and recognize that you are re real. We thank you, Lord, for new opportunities of being able to, to connect with family and make new friends and and to uh, start new adventures. We thank you for our church family, for the support and encouragement that we receive from one another, which today we heard a few different people mention. We thank you for when we are in need, they come and they help. And thank you, Lord, that for the workers who are here, who, who do what they can to be... Uh, to just share your love and to spread it. Lord, we take time today to pray for our community and for our world. We recognize that it's hurting. Use today and the message of hope that Easter brings to draw people closer to you and closer to each other. 
We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for sharing today. That was wonderful. Well, at this time is our kids' corner, and normally I do the teaching, but our kids are going to come up. So our younger kids, if they want to sit closer so they can see, but we're also going to get the, our professional actors to come forward. There you go. And Linda, maybe you could take a moment just to introduce everyone, too. So um, here's the wireless mic. I'm going to get Linda just to set things up. And guys, all the mics are where they were before. And I'm going to let Linda take care of it. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of our youth, and we have... Um, invited Gabe to join us. He's a part of the children's ministry. We just thank you. And we thank you for the opportunity to preach the gospel through this uh, play to you and hope that you're blessed by God through this and his spirit. Okay. But as we all know, they, they disobeyed God and brought sin into the world. He did it. You did it. Your fault. Because of the sin, we get separated from God. Oh, man, this is her fault. Oh, man, this is her fault. What do I have to do? Me? You ate the fruit, too. You're such a baby. God is a holy God, meaning he is set apart. He is the sinless, perfect creator of all things. We lost the ability to be near him because of sin. But God, who loves us so much, still wanted to make a way to dwell among us. That sounds tricky. Well, it is, and it isn't. That's the problem with holiness. God is holy. We are not. Our sin cannot coexist with holiness. So when we sin, it pushes away from him. In the Old Testament, God gave very specific instructions to his people for building his home, or tabernacle, the place where his people can go and meet with him. God's people built a tabernacle according to God's instructions. But how do we get to be with God? This was only for the priests to enter. They acted as the representative of the people. Then the Lord of the Holy of Holies. Do not go in there. Like, don't do it. Don't do 
too long. Get the stuff in it. Like, we ain't done with this yet. <laughs> anyway, the Holy of Holies is where the, co the Ark of Covenant was kept. And it was also where God's presence were. So once a year, one priest was allowed to go in and make an atonement for the people's sin. But there's a ton of sin. Right, but because God is a good father, he doesn't make it hard for us to know how to obey him. So he gave them a list of things that they could and couldn't do. There's a sacrifice for that. There's a sacrifice for that. Don't break into anyone's house unless it's or don't hurt anyone breaking into the house unless it's nice. There's a wait, what? Okay, that's probably enough. There are a lot of laws. That's weird. Why would it just be at night? You have to remember that this is a very different time and a very different culture. We might not understand everything about the laws. But we do know that God created them so that everyone could be treated fairly and there would be order. He loved his people so much. And he also gave them standards to live by to illustrate his holy his holiness. When you have any sort of boil or sore, you get that checked out by priests. Unclean. <laughs> you don't, if you have leprosy, you have to get that checked out by priests and then it's a sin to a leprosy. Unclean. 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 These rules were made by God to protect his people. Gone. The whole system of the tabernacle and the sacrifices was to keep God's people in community with him and with each other. The whole system of the tabernacle God's promise of a Savior was fulfilled. Jesus grew up living a perfect, sinless life. God created the law for his people, and Jesus came to fulfill the law. Jesus was cr crucified on a cross. He took on all of our sins, the sins that had been committed and the sins yet to be committed. This perfect, sinless lamb who knew no sin became sin for you and for me. And just before he died, he declared, No more sacrifices. No more dust. The problem with Moses was solved. Now it's up to you to accept God's free gift of life to live holy lives pleasing to him. But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive with Christ, by grace have been saved, and rise and raise us up with Jesus and the heavenly places of Christ. So that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward toward us in Jesus Christ. It is Up here too. Got to take a bow. Get over here and take a bow, guys. Ready? Do it together. I've, there you go. There you go. Take a bow. <laughs> Woo! There you go. Awesome. You guys can take a seat. Thank you so much. The kids can uh, head down. The younger kids can head down for Children's Church. The older kids are going to stay up with us. I tell you guys that. That boil thing with the priest, I'm really glad that's not happening anymore. <laughs> I mean, like, ugh. All right, there you go. Tina, I'm going to ask you to shut that window, the blind, second one. With my bald head, I'm probably blinding everyone with the light reflecting off of it. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. 
As there you go, I can see again. Now I got a green. I got like three different green dots on the on my in my vision right now. Awesome. Well, friends, uh, it's that time when we turn to God's Word. Uh, if you have your Bibles with you, or if you use a Bible app, turn with me now to the Gospel of Matthew. We're going to be reading from chapter 28, and we're going to be reading verses one to ten, one to ten. Again, that's Matthew 28, one to ten. What is Easter? Easter is more than just about having a long weekend. Oh, I think that would probably be awesome. Are you enjoying your long weekend? Anyone else got a long weekend this weekend? Enjoy it? Yeah, <laughs> there you go. You know, there's more than, to Easter than chocolate. There is. You know, I, I got to tell you, uh, I almost left out a secret there in this uh, weekend because uh, we went to Walmart this, this weekend and Tina was looking for those delicious little Cas, what is it? Casberry? Cat. I always say it wrong. I always say Cadbury. Whatever those eggs. And I was told her like, oh, you don't have to get me any. You don't have to get me any. And she ended up buying me a big bag. And then on, you know, you, like the, when she did that, I showed her the really big bag. <laughs> I got her. <laughs> so we got some chocolate to work our way through. So it's uh, it's just gonna be hard. So there's more to Easter than a long weekend or chocolate. There's more than just the family gatherings. Those are fun. Those are great. You know, there's more to it than the delicious food. Uh, you know, there's a lot more to Easter than all that. Easter is the season in which we remember and commemorate the sacrifice that Jesus made when he willingly died on the cross for our sins and it is also a time of celebration as we remember the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Our scripture today shares the incredible account of the resurrection and the message of hope it brings. And it highlights the impact that it had on those who first were eyewitness to, witnesses to it. So we're going to start with prayer and then we're going to jump right into our scripture. Lord, we come to you now with grateful hearts. Thank you for such a good day. And it has been such a good day. It's brought us joy to sing songs of praise, to hear your word read, to, to be able to share prayers with one another, to have our kids uh, teach us and remind us of the lessons of Easter. It's been good. It has been good. And we thank you, Lord, that at this time we have the opportunity to dig a little deeper into your word. Bless this time in which we focus on your word and the hope it brings. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Matthew 28, 1 to 10. After the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, was going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen just as he said, come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. What a time it must have been to be those first followers, to be those first the first people who actually saw Jesus. Just think about what has transpired on the timeline of things. Just a week ago, we were celebrating Passover. And this is a time in which Jesus victoriously entered Jerusalem, riding on a donkey with the crowd surrounding him, placing their cloaks and breaking palm branches and putting them in front of him in the past as they joyfully shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus spent the week in Jerusalem teaching in the temple. And he confronted the religious leaders. And no one stood against him. The city 
was alive with excitement. And there was this air of expectation as people wondered, what is Jesus going to do next? Before anyone could make any sense of it, Jesus drew his closest followers to him, sharing with them what would eventually be called the Last Supper. And he told them the truth, a truth that they didn't want to hear. He would be betrayed by one of them and killed. After the meal, Jesus showed them once more the calling that his followers would have. He stripped down to his undergarments and washed the feet of his disciples. A task that we may think wasn't that big of a deal. But in the time that Jesus did it, in the culture that it was done in, this was considered such a demeaning act that a person could not even order a Jewish slave to do it. That's the kind of love we are to have for each other if we are to call ourselves Christians. That is the kind of service we are called to offer if we wish to follow Jesus. Then Jesus led his disciples to the Garden of Gethsemane, a garden that still exists. If you travel to Israel today, you can actually go to that garden. There is still the uh, olive trees that are there that are over a thousand years old, over 2000 years old. I'm told. Wouldn't that be cool to see? This garden was a place of tranquility and peace. This is where Jesus was arrested by the religious leaders with the help of Judas Iscariot. When my daughter was young, she used to call him Judas the scariest. Yeah, love that kid. Yes, he was betrayed by Judas. By an act, a symbol of love. He was betrayed with a kiss. Jesus was taken to the Sanhedrin where he was questioned. He was physically assaulted. And eventually charged with blasphemy. He was then taken to Pilate. The Roman governor who found no fault in Jesus. But who washed his hands of it all. And gave Jesus over to them. To be crucified. I've always wondered. After the death of Jesus. If Pilate ever felt his hands could be clean. Jesus was beaten. He was flogged. That's a very sanitary word that describes a very brutal form of punishment that tears the flesh off of the bones of a living person. He was mocked and forced to carry his own cross to the place of execution, a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Jesus was nailed to the cross which was placed between two criminals. A sign above him said the king of the Jews. The Roman soldiers who carried out the orders to crucify Jesus divided his clothes among themselves right in front of him. He was mocked. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. The Bible records how the sky grew dark. And at three, Jesus cried out to God. Soon after, soon after, his, Jesus said, it is finished. And with that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. His broken body was taken down from the cross and Jesus was buried in a nearby tomb in which a massive stone was rolled in front of it to ensure that it wouldn't be disturbed. Pilate had this stone sealed with guards posted around the tomb. Our scripture tells us what happens next. After the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. Even in their grief, 
the two women wanted to be as close to Jesus as they could. In their eyes, they recognized and believed that he was gone. I mean, after all, who could survive such a brutal ordeal? And he had been in the tomb, too. Yet when the women reached the tomb, they didn't see what they expected. Instead of, our scripture tells us that this massive stone had been rolled back and there was an angel sitting on, on the stone. You don't see that every day. The angels described in our scripture, his appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. And the guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. They, they passed out in fear. The angel tells the women not to be afraid. And he invites them to look inside the tomb to see with their own eyes. Jesus was no longer dead, but rather he was alive again. Then the angels gave these women a task. Then go quickly and tell the disciples, he has risen from the dead and he's going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. We began today with a greeting. He is risen. And now you know where the scripture reference comes from. And the women, they did what the angel told him, told them to do. Our scripture says, so the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy and ran to tell the disciples. Jesus is the author and perfecter of our faith. He can pull us out of the darkest pit. He can open our eyes so that we can see even when we have been blind all of our lives. He can fan into flames hope where hope has long been snuffed out. He wipes the tears from our eyes. He brings joy and laughter to the downtrodden and the broken. He gives life. Imagine all what these women went through in the seven days before. Yet there he was. Jesus was still surprising them. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings. Talk about an understatement. <laughs> Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and they worshipped him. Where are you today? Are you discouraged? Have you come to church feeling broken? Do you feel lost? Are you questioning? Is Jesus still alive? He invites you to look into the tomb. Even today, people gather at what was his tomb. Jesus is not there. In fact, Jesus is here today. Just close your eyes and reach out with your heart. You'll feel the Holy Spirit flow amongst you. Do you know Jesus? Would you recognize him? If you feel you don't, there is a way. This past week, I was walking my dog. And as we made our way along the streets of Markdale, we passed a church. And in the darkness, in the evening, they were holding some sort of event. And the lights of the church were on. And instead of the sun shining in through the light, of the, uh, shining light through the windows, it was the other way where light from within the church was shining out. And the light of the church shone through a stained glass window. I wasn't really paying much attention. I was busy keeping my eye on my dog. And I looked over and caught sight of this window, the stained glass window that had the image of Jesus standing at the door, knocking and waiting. Instantly, I remembered Revelation 3.20. 
in which Jesus says, here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. I will have fellowship with you and you with me. Put aside the other things that we often surround Easter with. Dig deep into what the heart of Easter is. And what you will find is Jesus. He loves you. Jesus loves you. He loves you so much that he climbed up onto a cross willingly to bear the punishment that you deserved. That you were going to get. He took it on himself. That's how much he loved you. That's how much he loves you. Allow him into your life. Accept him. Accept his friendship. Accept the joy that it is to know that you are not alone. That Jesus, God's son, is with you. Allow yourself to experience him. Allow him to open your eyes. Allow Jesus to do the unexpected in your life and follow him and he will not fail you for he has promised us life and life to the full. Easter is the ultimate victory over death. It's time to start living, living for Jesus. Let us pray. Dear God, as we conclude our Easter worship service, we want to thank you for reminding us again of the hope that we have in Jesus and for demonstrating the ultimate sacrifice of love through his death and resurrection. Thank you for your words you have given us in the Bible that encourage us and inspire us in our faith. We pray that the message that we've heard today throughout all aspects of our service will remain with us throughout the week and beyond so that we may live out our faith with passion and joy. We ask that you bless each person here, that they may leave this place with a heart full of gratitude, a mind full of hope and strength to face whatever lies ahead. May your love continue to guide us and may your peace stay with us always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. One final song. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my turn Till I met you I was breathing but not Alive. All my failures I try to hide. It was my turn till I met you. You called my name. Oh, my name.
you my sin was heavy but chains break at the weight of your glory i needed shelter i was an orphan now you call me a citizen of heaven when i was broken you were my healing now you're Give Jesus a hand. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Happy Easter. He is risen. God bless you all.